Uh, good afternoon, my name is James Loft. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I'm the Chief Operating Officer at, uh, at Rainbow. So um, I'm going to I'm going to make a, um, a, a surmise here, and a lot of you probably won't like it. That lots of businesses are going to fail uh, because they're not going to properly amplify their, their people, uh, and in particular their, their best people throughout their business using technology. Um, we are of a firm belief that the only way that organisations future-proof uh, themselves is by taking a balance of technology uh, uh, and, the, and your best people. So it's absolutely brilliant to hear the end of the, the Wells Fargo talk there about the importance of human because everything we do at Rainbow is, is built around codifying human expertise and, and, and passing it out around the business. So we have an interesting view of AI at uh, Rainbird and I'm not here to uh, sort of uh, theorise or anything like that. This is a, a, a very applied stage. So, um, But I want to share with you um, what we believe AI to be and what the journey for AI is in our view and why it's important to be based around four things. So these are our pillars uh, of human-centric automation. Um, and they are pillars uh, and each one matters in our view as much as all the others. So education, and that's a very easy word to use. What do we mean by that? Education in not just new technology, not just new skills, but ways, new ways of thinking around the change of technology in large organizations, in small organizations, um, but really looking at how we start our journey with those who are still in education today about the, the, the work style of the future, uh, and giving new tools, not just, not just new ways of thinking, but new tools um, to tackle the problems that they may face in that world, not just making sure that everyone's a coder. Automation. We, we see this as one of our core pillars, and I imagine many of you, many of you do. Um, automation is important to us uh, f for a number of reasons. Um, automation is freeing people's time up who have been bogged down by um, the operational elements of what they do and what they become specialists in. So for us, automation is a key element in that set of pillars about allowing organizations to take that, ne that next step and, and really transform. Regulation, we can't ignore it. I'm not going to make any bold statements like the regulators coming. Um, we all work in uh, some form of industry that is watched or, or monitored in some way. Some of us in, in, in um, industry, certainly in financial services, that are more closely watched. But regulation is about more than that, we believe, in this context. It's about um, all of these words you see. I mean, up here, um, explainability is, is such a word which means so much within, the, within that regulation piece. And finally, transformation. It's um, We've been uh, going as an organization for six years now, and um, it's been really interesting to see how um, at the beginning of the AI piece, uh, in, in, the, in the recent push, everyone forgot everything they'd learned about digital transformation over the, over the past years, and sort of went, oh, new technology, let's play with all of them, and sort of forgot about the wider context in which it's sitting. So transformation, if you like, wraps up all of our pillars, but in, in many ways, it, it's about making sure you know where you're going um, with your intention of, of what you're doing with the technology as much anything else. So, huh, you need a toolkit, right? That's, that's all you need. It's that simple. And, and out there, out those doors, in essence, is the world's best toolkit in AI. Um, I think we're all familiar with the phrase, a bad workman blames his tools. Um, and I think one of the things that, that's very, that's very dear to us is about making sure that we get the right balance when we're looking at the tools available to people. So, yes, there are great tools for doing certain parts of what you're trying to do, but it has to fit uh, alongside other tools, but also alongside the expertise that you hold within your organization already, the specialisms you, the specialisms you hold, um, uh, and really how you, how you run your business. So um, I think it's fair to say that there are uh, the wrong tools out there if they're used in the wrong way, or there's great enablers um, if, if they're brought together in a way that's, that's um, in line with, with where the business is, is functioning, uh, and how the humans in and around them interact. Um, so we, we thought about this, and we thought um, we thought about the best way of, of creating Rainbow that supported what organisations are trying to do, um, and, and we, we, we made a tool that very deliberately uh, you need no developer capabilities to use or deploy. So we, we created a tool that allowed businesses to capture um, capture knowledge and be able to scale that uh, across across functions, be that front office, back office, uh, whatever is appropriate. We did this because we felt this pain ourselves. Um, we, all, all of the guys uh, have been in other other roles where um, 
we spent months and months and months sitting with a development team to build a new automated uh, tool or to capture some information that sorts of business. Um, and we really, we had to have developers sitting next to subject matter experts, working very long hours, losing um, in translation between them um, on that journey. And we sort of said there's got to be a better way for that. So that's why we built Rainbow as a platform, because uh, essentially what we wanted to do is build the automation capability, the technology, that allowed anybody else to bring that expertise into it, layer that on top, uh, and be able to see automation of their, of their own specialism, their own expertise. So what does that look like? Um, well, I talk about a, um, a business user um, capability, uh, and in a, a really rather crude way, this, this is a screenshot of our, of our editor, uh, our graphical editor, and this is how you capture knowledge within Rainbow. So there's no code here at all in any way. Um, so really it's somebody who is either a subject matter expert in their field, or somebody who works very closely with them can capture that information into the system. Um, that, in essence, is, is information on a topic, not on a decision. So we're breaking that linear function by allowing um, somebody to code in what they know on a topic, not how to make a particular decision or a, um, uh, a particular process uh, around it. Um, that comes with its own challenges, and that's why, that's why education is such an important part of this, because people are um, very linear thinking people um, and uh, have been doing things in a certain way for a very long time. So, um, part of what we enjoy actually with, with Rainbird and, and, and working with our clients is how we actually get people to really see their topic that they deal with every day in a, in a different way, in a, a non-linear way, and they actually see how powerful what they already know as an organization can be. Um, so what, what is automated decision making in, in our view? Uh, well, um, within this platform, uh, we've built something that doesn't need large amounts of data uh, to use it. So um, no, there is no need to have a large data set to start with in getting the benefit out of this particular automation. And what we mean by that is we're taking the other, the other end. So um, rather than a data up approach, we're starting with a human and we're coming down. So we're capturing the knowledge of those humans and, and, and allowing that to work across. That, that doesn't mean we can't connect it into data sources. That doesn't mean you can't benefit from data if you have it. It's just that the data is not the fundamental layer within which uh, automation is coming out of the user room. Um, we're, we're beyond RPA. And what do we mean by that? We, well, um, we're breaking the linear function of automating uh, using Rainbow. So we're not telling Rainbow how to make a decision, but in fact telling Rainbow about a topic and then allowing Rainbow to pose questions to that topic. What we're actually doing is we're breaking, um, breaking that linear piece, which allows us to do uh, a lot more gathering of um, edge cases or the long tail, if you like, of automation, which is that low volume, high complexity topic. So being situational allows us to ask the questions in a way which allows us to, to capture a lot of that, that piece. Um, I loved the, if anyone was in the room before, I loved the, the maps analogy. That's actually one we use every day at Rainbird. Um, the best way to think about Rainbird is exactly that. We haven't written the rule to get to every single point in the world, to every single point in the world. We've told Rainbird how roads work. So when you say, I want to go from here to here, Rainbird looks at the rules of the road and tells you how you can do that. Now, if the road's closed, Rainbird will find a way around it. So that saved my analogy there from Wells Fargo. But, but yeah, absolutely something we use every day. Um, full transparency. So we are very proud of the fact that we are based on a rules uh, a rule set. So what that gives us, it gives us the opportunity to give scalability within a set of parameters of the rules that are going into the system. So that allows us to be able to 100% explain on each case uh, what the impacts and what the elements being pushed into the system were in order to make the decision. So if you're in a regulated environment, we can articulate end to end, um, not just what information was involved in making the decision, but actually where those different pieces came from. So if a customer inputs a piece of information into the system, we can highlight that and show that the, uh, the mathematical impact that had on the overall decision. Uh, and finally, um, we, we got the opportunity to all, uh, automate high value decisions. So I've talked about this sort of highly situational piece. Uh, and really, um, what, what we're seeing here is it, it's things that were traditionally the handoffs, the anomalies, uh, the things that needed a human to go and, and do some kind of investigation into. Um, so actually what we're seeing is a very interesting thing. So when we talk about the practical application of Rainbow, what we're seeing is, yes, we're automating tasks. Yes, we're automating volume for people. But actually we're freeing people back up to be specialists again. Uh, and it's a really interesting thing to see because we're hearing 
uh, time and time again where people are really owning and being very, very proud of the, their, specific, their specific knowledge for their field that they're capturing into the system. Um, we've actually had rules named after people who do things slightly differently and it's become, we've got one which is Sarah's rule, uh, which is, she just, this, this lady just did things slightly differently in her part of her business and it just was more effective than everybody else. So she has named that part and really, really owns it. And, and actually she now is not managing a team of operational people. She's, she's risen up in her thinking and she's been more proactive for, for, her, for her department and, and what they do. So one of the ways that we look about this often with our clients is on the, um, uh, uh, the compliance level, the risk level, the, the policing level. And actually, if you think about that change in people, it's actually very similar for what the change can be in organizations. So um, being able to allow organizations to make decisions on, on micro and macro levels around their risk appetite, around their compliance appetite. So what it gives us, it gives us the opportunity for um, uh, a, a department or a product to have a view on risk and to monitor compliance against that risk level, but also for that to feed up to a, an organizational risk view. Um, and and um, take factors that uh, the outside world has that analysts would look at and, and on that macro level. Um, and really what Raymond is, is very capable of also doing is looking in on itself and looking at all of those pieces. And if, if a board is going to meet for a large bank and discuss their risk appetite, Raymond can actually take the information and point out to that board what are the things you should be talking about to make sure that you're properly deciding what your risk level is from the organization. And once you've done that, the great thing about Rainbow is connected, that can come back down to all of those products or all of those departments uh, and can be immediately fed down from the risk appetite of the organization. Um, I've been trying to decide whether I agree with this quote or not. Um, um, and I think what I've come to is I do agree with it in the sense of um, you have to build an industrial scale solution um, in order to, to digest all the regulatory change. But I'm not sure I believe operation is the word. And I think that's where Raymond really plays a part. And that's where we want to tackle this, this thinking that um, you don't have to build an entire um, reactive um, organizational response to something when, when the technology is there to support it. Slight change of tack and a little bit of a, a plug. Um, we won an award last night, um, the uh, AI Iconics Award um, for best application in financial services. You could have, it's fine, you don't have to applaud, it's all right. Um, and we won that for a particular use case, uh, which, is, which is fraud. I uh, just want to spend a minute just talking a little bit about what, what that use case is and, and how it came across. So fraud, um, and actually in this case, we, we've done fraud across lots of different parts of financial services. Uh, we've done it in um, uh, uh, bank cards, we've done it in um, online payments. Uh, this particular case is in credit card. So in essence, if you think of the scene, um, uh, as a consumer, uh, you get a text message, uh, some, there may be some fraudulent activity on your card, etc., etc. Please phone us up with some information, answer these questions on text message if you're lucky to have that service. But what happens is there tends to need to be some kind of interaction with a, with a customer. We uh, have built a system uh, with, with one large um, credit card organization in the UK um, where we have looked at how the humans would have run case management after a detection and we've codified that into Rainbow. So Rainbow now looks at that um, uh, straight away after a detection is raised uh, and investigates uh, further in the way that a human would have done. Um, that's massively reduced the amount of time it takes. There's no SLAs anymore. Um, uh, there, there, there is no need to hand off further. And it's really brought a lot back into that, uh, that entire operational piece. But what's that given uh, people? Well, it's given them a, a frictionless customer experience. And I think this is really important. It's easy to forget when you're talking about a back office process, but um, there's a huge likelihood if you have a, um, a, a fraud alert uh, that you are less likely to use the card that the fraud alert was on for a period of time. So as much as it's horrible to read a text message, there's actually a, a final potential financial impact to that organization on, on even their not being fraud, but there being a potential flag of it. Um, it's allowing us, and if you, if you remember I mentioned about these opportunities where humans have um, uh, been be sort of lifted up from the operational um, and um, can, can look in the wide, wider environment again. Actually, what we found by deploying uh, Rainbird in this instance and actually deploying Rainbird looking at itself in this instance is Rainbird has also started picking up new patterns of fraud. And if you think of this environment to date, 
the only way we really were able to combat new types of fraud is when they happen to us, and then we would learn and we would adapt and we'd make that change. This is bringing that alert far earlier to a collection of people who are not bogged down in operational pieces of work. So they're more proactive, the system's giving them the facts they need to investigate, and they're responding better to new types of fraud a lot quicker. Um, yeah, um, so uh, obviously that gives, gives um, people the, the opportunity to look at um, things where there's, there's a wider or a, or a larger um, value. And when you think about a lot of the, the movement at the moment in fraud where repayment on behalf of the um, bank, on behalf of people who've been defrauded, there's a pressure for that to build. This is becoming more and more important for, for, for solving. Um, finally, I've mentioned it before, but just, just think about for a second in the context of fraud what that means. Um, we're giving the organization the ability to uh, go back and, and, and record within their systems the elements that they made to determine if something was or wasn't fraud. So if they ever needed to defend that or learn from it in some way, that's a full uh, uh, depicted tra uh, transaction of, of how they got to that piece of information. Um, it does. Um, I, uh, there, there is a view that tackling some of the issues that we're talking about here today uh, using AI is creating a new set of risks. Um, uh, and that's very much at the heart of why, of why Rainbird is, is so determined to tackle the explainability. So it's why we started with the rule set, it's why we came back to look at that, uh, that, that um, scalability of, of decisions and automated decisions, is we really wanted to make sure that the explainability was a core part of what we do. So where do we sit? So I imagine many of you came here today maybe thinking I'm coming to get, uh, have a look at RPA technology or I'm coming to look at machine learning. Um, we're complementary in that environment, without a doubt. Um, but what we really bring is that human-centric element. We, we bring the technology that meets the human capability, and that those two things together scale the organization uh, beyond that point. And we believe by, by breaking that linear element, by not risking that larger risk, um, potential black box environment, we're giving people the opportunity to benefit now from a scalable decision-making uh, uh, capability uh, without having to deal with some of those other elements. So we do believe that that gives us the opportunity to truly say we are an explainable AI technology, um, and that's something that is, as I said, very proud of, and uh, very important to us. So I, uh, if I leave you um, surely with this, this thought, this is the EU Commission uh, recently said um, these, the, the seven elements of uh, an AI uh, being ethical. Um, I think, uh, hopefully, from what I've what I've talked to you through today, um, you can see how these are very, um, very important to us as a technology, and very important to the crisis we're working with, uh, and, and and really um, take a technology like Rainbow in order to be able to solve many of them together. So I will I will leave you with my pillars again. Um, I urge you, if you would like to come and have a conversation with us uh, to debate any of that, more than happy. Uh, we are just literally outside here on the left-hand side at uh, AI H16. Um, thank you very much for your time.